Hello guys, this is Novin Reddy. So today we'll talk about the next algorithm which is monoalphabetic. Now how monoalphabetic works for that we I have already created a video on YouTube. Uh, so you will find that link below in the description area. So now now how uh, monoalphabetic work is we have to instead of having like in CSI for what we have done is we have to we have taken uh, like uh, uh, a will, will be added with three b will be added with three and any other number any other letter will be added with three right so the result will be your cipher text in modified version instead of adding with three we have taken any number between 1 to 20, 25 right but with some of the operations or some of the calculations anyone can attack your cipher text to get the plain text is because you can go for different combinations right starting from 1 to 25 you can take any number if you got one character or one letter you will get all the letters so what we want we want to specify every there should be a key value right for every character there should be a different value example uh, let me start with the uh, start with the practical so uh, let's name it as mono half i'm gonna have okay uh now what is monoalphabetic is like let's suppose we have a sequence so let's imagine we have a sequence called as a b c d e f g h and we have this goes on right so what we can do instead of having a we can say a will be replaced by x then b will be replaced by n then your C will be replaced by Y and A like D will be replaced by A, then P, then H. So any combination. So next time whenever you see A in your plain text that will be replaced by X. Whenever you see uh, B in your plain text that will be replaced by N. Okay, so to, to make it work, we have to write a big code now. So just let me check if it's working. Okay, it's going on. Okay. So to implement this, what we'll do is we'll take a main function. Okay, this is your main function now okay i hope you're familiar with all the shortcuts now okay so for wh what we need is uh, uh, again we need a plain text and we need a cipher text now we'll take a key now now what this key means it's a string value like we'll name it as key and this will have all the characters from uh, a to z but a that the uh, it will define the key values like a should be replaced by x b will be replaced by n something in that way you can take any sequence but make sure ki all these characters are unique there should not be any character which is repeated and we need 26 characters here so we'll define it this way so it's x n y a h p o uh, then g z q then w b t uh, s f l r c v then m u e k z d i again this is predefined uh, string i have uh, it's not compulsory to go with this sequence but make sure every character is unique there okay now we have to take input from uh, user right so we require a plain text from user so what we'll do we'll define a buffer reader using which user will take input from uh, input from user so we'll this buffer reader b r equal to new buffer reader and we'll say new input stream reader and in bracket you have to pass your input device which is your system dot n so this this is how you write buffer reader again there might be some this is a checked exception so what we have to do is we have to say those exceptions again we have to import the package so you can click here and add import package now what next uh will uh now we have we have to take input from user as pt again we have remain missing with one package done now so you have to take input from user right so we have to say pt uh, we'll ask user to enter so it's out enter uh plain text now what next we have to ask user to uh, to enter details so it will enter his plain text so we have to save that plain text into pt so we'll say br dot read line now again for simplicity we'll convert this text into uppercase so we can directly say to uppercase this will convert your text into uppercase once you got this we have to find ciphertext now and again how to find ciphertext we'll create a method called as do encrypt Okay, do encrypt and we'll pass two things. We'll, we'll pass plain text and then with this we'll pass a key. Okay, as simple as that.
And once you got the ciphertext, then we'll directly print our ciphertext here. So we'll say system dot dot print ln uh, ciphertext colon. It will be your concatenation. Yeah, CD. So once you got the encrypted value, this value will be printed here. Okay. Now the question arises: How will you convert this PT into CT? That's that. That's mean we have to define this do encrypt method, right? Again, we are calling do encrypt from static method, so we have to define this method as static. So we'll say static string do encrypt, and in this uh, we are we have to accept two values. One will be PT, second will be a uh, string key. Now, now our task is let's imagine user is entering a text like uh, like my name. It's Navin. Okay, so if you got a name Navin, so you have to replace n with a subordinate value of n. Let Let's imagine now what I don't know what is n the n uh, character value. Let's Let's take a. So if you take a here, it should be x, right? So once you compile this code, the uh, the output should be if you say it's a, it should be x. If you say it is v, it should be somewhere e or uh, yeah, it should be e, right? So what we need is we have to convert each and every character with its subordinate key. For that, for that we have to start with we have to first take the index value of uh, the character. So for that we'll take a variable as uh, we'll say idx, which is defined index, and then to fetch the value we'll fetch that we'll save that value in C. Now. Now we have to take we have to take this pt and we have to take each and every character right so what we can do is we can just say uh, to again to if you take a string here because string is immutable we want something mutable here so what we can do is we can create object of string buffer as we have seen array also so string buffer s b equal to new string uh, buffer and in bracket now you have to pass your pt. Now, now we have to fetch each and every value, right? And for that, what we can do is we can just use a for loop here. Uh oh, okay. We can just use a for loop here, and this for loop will start with zero. So we can directly define it as int i equal to zero, and this i will uh, go till again. I don't, I don't know the length of the string, right? So what we can, I can directly say is. Uh, sb dot length so it will give me the length and then i plus plus now now let's imagine we are our first test uh, first test test uh, character or uh, value is n right now for this n we have to fetch its index number now how to fetch the value of n or index number of n it's very simple first we will take the character so how to break we'll save that uh, index number in idx equal to now how to fetch the value we can directly say sb dot char at now char at where char at from i so first value will be i equal to zero so it will fetch n and i need its uh, index value so i can directly say minus 65 right so it will return me ask value and ask value minus 65 will give me the index number simple right and then uh, then what we can so what we can do is we can save that character. We, we have to fetch the character from this range where your index number matches, right? Example, if your n is 13, let's assume it's uh, 13. So it, you will not get 13 exactly. You will get uh, uh, somewhere between 88. So you will get n as 88. Then then 88 minus 65 will be 13. Uh, not so not uh, i'm going for long, long calculation let's imagine it's 78 right so let's imagine it's n is 78 the ASCII value for n is 78 so what we can do is we can find ASCII value for n which is 78 78 minus 65 will be 13 which means uh, the uh, index value is 13 so we have to fetch the 13th value from this string okay and how to do that it's very simple again we'll say z equal to so from key, we have to say char from key char at we want id x value. You will get a character from this string, and that's it. Then we have to replace we have to replace this n with that value. I guess it should be uh, between uh, t or something. So I don't know. So let's see. So we'll say uh, we can directly say sb dot set char 
uh, on location i and we want the new value so this this new value will be replacing this n symbol right and then once you've done all this thing we have to just return this we have to return this uh, string buffer so how to return string buffer so we'll say return a new string and in this if you pass sb it will convert your string buffer into string and you will get the value and you will get the output right so let's let's run this let's see if it works as I promise, I will go with my name first, just for demonstration. Uh, yeah, it's asking me for a plain text. What we'll say is N A V I N. Enter. Oh, it's not uh, T. It was S. So this is my N is S, A is X. As we know, A is X. And then again for this N, it will be S. And as simple as that. This is your cipher text. This is how modern alphabetic works, right? Now what if uh, we want uh, like mm, let let let's see how to go for decryption here. Now uh, let's now decryption is a bit difficult here. Uh, so for that let's define a static method called as static string uh, do decrypt. Again, it will it will take two values. One will be string ct, and second will be string key. Again, what it will return it is it will return a plain text. Now, again, we have to follow some steps. Again, we want index numbers, so we'll say idx. Then we require a character, so we'll say cat c. Okay. Again, we have we have to replace values, so we have to say string buffer. So it's string buffer sb equal to new string buffer and this time it will take it will take ct right so since we have to find uh, pt we have to take ct as a value and again the same step we have to follow we have to take a uh, loop will start with zero loop will go till sb dot uh, length as we have done previously and then here first step is we have to fetch the value of c now so instead of going for the index value first we have to fetch the character and for that we'll say c equal to sb dot char at and we'll fetch value of i here okay now once you got the value of i that is your c like initially my output was this one right so we have to fetch this s and it will store in c now we have to fetch the index value of that uh, of that s right and to do that we'll uh, it's it's difficult to find that value that's why we'll say idx equal to we'll use a method called as get index again this is a user defined func uh, method so i have to define it and we'll pass two values here one is c and key and let's define that method also because we want to get the index so what we'll do is we'll define a static method static int get index which will provide me the index and we'll take two parameters since you are passing to two, uh, two parameters we have to take that parameter so we'll say c and key and this will start the index value from negative okay and we have to start your for loop because we don't know the index value right we have to fetch the index from the character and to get that we have to run a loop which will start with uh which will start with zero and we'll run the loop till the key length again it will be 26 so you can either use 26 here or you can use key length and this will be i plus plus now we have to check the if that the character we are passing is matching the uh, value of key here like how to check that we have to use if condition so we can directly say if key uh, key dot cat at i is equal to equal to c we can simply say your idx equal to i right it's so simple it's just you have to traverse from this key if you got the value you have to return the index value right so if you're done with this if you're done with this after your for loop what we can do is we can just return this idx value again it's not compulsory to take minus one here you can take zero also or any value but for, for simplicity we are making it as minus one because if you want to go for validations you can check that thing uh, if it is minus one or not so for that we have done that minus one is not compulsory 
since we have to pass one value because you cannot make it blank you have to pass some value so we are passing minus one now once you got the index value the next step is you have to take that character you have to replace this character with uh, you have to replace this value with index since we are going with index plus 65 since last time we have done minus 65 this time we have to say plus 65 and we have to include that in since it's our operation we have to include the brackets and the next step is once you've done that we have to replace your character with the original value and we have to replace it with i and c right so this was your cipher text let's take a plain text so we'll say pt equal to do decrypt and we have to pass ct and key now let's pt let's plain text uh, colon and this will be your pt right let's run this code depend upon my input if my input is navin uh oh something is missing here missing return statement where 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 okay here i am missing a return statement so what to do is after your for loop you have to say new okay you have to return value so with new string as we did last time we'll say sb okay that was the mistake let's run this code again my plain text will be it's Naveen enter C. and this is your cipher text and this is your plain text since we are going for the uh, uppercase that's why we are getting the output as uppercase so this is how your mono alphabetic works so for uh, do subscribe for next video thank you so much for watching thank you